I went, hey, and she was like, all right, blew me in the car. It was on. Yeah. And you kind of have Ric Flair to thank for that. You know, yeah, well, I had to blow Flair. <laughs> a theory that during the drug test program those days like well if it's legal in the country that we're in then technically it's okay right right yeah so we got we got in one of those little pedicab deals and told the guy take us to the bad part of town scott was like was really fucked up and he, he credited to the fact that he took 34 and we had only taken 33 well, that's fucking like, medical like, proof right there. <laughs> exactly. I stand by that statement. We send them shots. And then we tell the waitress, because of course now they're obligated to send them back. And then we tell the waitress, no, no, ours, Diet Coke, and water every time. Charge them for the jack, you keep the money. So now they're down to get involved. Plus, we're tipping them good. And then you see those guys in the morning, like, oh, fuck. We're like, hey, what's up, hey? You know, see you see tomorrow tonight. I mean, we just did it where they they just want to go home. I love Bongo. At that time, he was going through a divorce, and I was going through a divorce, and we were out of control. And he had a dude. He had like this mule from Texas bringing the yayo every TV because you know Steve's too smart. He ain't gonna travel with it. He's fucking like I'm trying to let you know maybe get him in on the deal there, and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'm Kurt Hennig. And Big Scott Hall. All that build up and this guy's worried about cock, right? Then there was like money riding on it. And it was like fucking a dick down. You know, Virgil, you're always talking this shit. Here's our fucking white boy here. You know, let's see. These girls are going to be the judge. Maybe they need to fluff it, whatever, whatever, you know? Right. And, and Virgil backed down. The clicks, dicks. So on the one end of the spectrum, you've got uh, Virgil. And on the other end of the spectrum, this is uh, Seth Rollins. And so Vince calls me, and, and you know, they're doing the Goldo single, and he goes, we're gonna do this Goldo single, you know, we're gonna sing with you. And he goes, you know, he's gonna be, you know, he's gonna be in love with you. And then, like, I'm thinking, and he goes, let me tell you about my first homosexual experience. And I remember sitting, me and Kev were both sitting in Vince's office at TV. And my, I looked at Kevin, my first thought was, as opposed to your most recent, <laughs> like you and Warrior on a bearskin rug. To me, wrestlers always make their money like prostitutes, you know, like you sell your body for money. When you work for Vince, you're like a street walker. You know, how good, you're only as good as your last trick. But in WCW, it's like being a high dollar escort. And Spooky Fingers is just something we were just doing in the locker room, like, ooh, the guys go, man, fuck you, man, fuck you, like, ooh. You got a pretty big mug, you know. They don't serve they don't serve soda in bottles anymore. He says, you know, you, you know, like he's talking about drinking down the road while you're driving. He's going, bro, you know, you can you can hide a can with your hand. So it made sense to me. Some drinking beer with the Hawkster, things are good. And I toothpicked Jerry Lawler, and Jerry goes like, oh, and he had on his own taken a toothpick and broke it off. So he stuck part of it. He stuck part of it in his eye, and he walked around for like three minutes just selling some crowd. And Jerry's so good, I just sat up on the turnbook and let him do his thing. Go there and tell him, like, ask him if he's sick. Does he even miss workouts? So, you know, two or three guys would do that, and pretty soon, you know, he said, then it worked, and then Warlord came up to Kurt, like, you know, he's drawing his thing out. He's going, fuck it, hit me, brother, shoot me. He said, Kurt said he shot it in his ass, and we pushed it in, and we pulled out, stuff burbled out, and he said, brother, you're full. 